Okay, let's take a look a bit at the gear that I'm going to take with me. One of my least favorite pieces of equipment are poles. I have poles only to ford rivers. Because when you're fording rivers, it's good that you have like three points of contact when you're in water so that you don't tip over, the water doesn't pull you over. And when I have the poles that I have, they're just, they're very light, but that makes them also very brittle. And brittle and harsh terrain don't really go well hand in hand. Like, look at these, these just, these just snapped. And this is useless, this is carbon fiber and I can just, I don't even know why I still I brought them back. I, I should just throw them away. So I earlier this year I bought these these other poles. They're quite okay. Now of course they're quite okay un until they break. Let's see what else is here. Ah okay, yeah, here's the tent. This is a really light tent. It's about 700 grams and uh, sleeps one and you can sit inside of it. That it's it's nice, but it's it's been through a lot. I've taken it with me to Iceland, it was windy all the time. I've been in Faroe Islands for a week, also it was super strong winds, it was falling over. And in Scotland it went through, it was just, the wind was just beating it. So I think that tent can only sustain some re nice retirement days in some forest where it's not very windy. Then, let's see, sleeping pads. Oh, there are some nice memories from these. Okay, let's take these two out. These are the most relevant. A sleeping pad can make you either a happy camper or a miserable camper. That's why it's, it's good to have a good sleeping pad. And I thought that just going very light would be good. But it's not necessarily good. Just take a look at this. So this sleeping pad is super light. It's 170 grams or something like that. And it has these strategically placed holes all across. You know, that's probably a fantastic idea on, on paper. You know, you place holes where you don't need to be uninsulated. Um, but it's cold as hell to sleep on this. Particularly when the ground is frozen. I mean, this is probably a good summer pad. That's why after spending many sleepless nights in Iceland, sleeping on cold ground, I considered buying something without holes. So I got this Thermarest sleeping pad that's... Uh, actually, when you lie on it, you can feel the heat being reflected back towards your body. And that's my kind of sleeping pad. I mean, it weighs a little bit extra, but it's definitely worth it. I'll at least be able to sleep. This is my go-to sleeping bag for all adventures. Ah, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a down sleeping bag that packs into a really small ball. So while yes, I can pack it into the size of perhaps one and a half liters or so. And this is fantastic. It's like 450 grams. It's, it's extremely light, but it has its downsides. The limit temperature for this sleeping bag is plus one. And the extreme is minus 13. Now, I've been looking at the weather forecast for Greenland and it's going to be minus five or so at night. And that's not going to cut it. This is just not going to do. I have to get a better sleeping bag. So I did my research online and I ended up with this monster. They say it's the lightest and warmest sleeping bag out there. And I trust it. Let's see how small I can pack it. So even though this bag probably takes Two and a half times as much space as the other one and it's double the weight so it's 880 grams it should get comfortable at around minus five degrees celsius and the, the limit is around minus 16 so i think i should feel pretty comfortable sleeping in this and sleeping is a very important part of any adventure if you don't sleep well you don't perform well and you know everything just starts crumbling 
Now I'm not really sure which shoes to take with me. I have these shoes, which are really good. They have fantastic grip, they're quite comfortable. Um, but the downside is that once they get wet, they take a really long time to dry. Then on the other hand, I have these shoes, which I've used also. Uh, so this is the second pair that I own. These are also very comfortable. And um, the good thing is that they dry really quickly when they get wet. And in areas where I'm usually traveling, there's a lot of rain or a lot of rivers. So the downside of these shoes is that they start falling apart very quickly. So here I have the two pairs that I'm considering, but I also want to show you what happens with these shoes uh, when you go out for a long because these are this is, a, this is the same model but these I've used in Iceland and I've covered in Iceland in nine days 530 kilometers and this is what happens by the last few days you know I wasn't even really sure whether I'm gonna whether I'm gonna make it because my toes were basically falling out so this is, I know that this is going to happen to these shoes also, and they are, they are getting, they're kind of getting there. Well, these shoes, these are pretty good. They have really, really good grip, and they have also started falling apart a little bit, but I think these are still okay. But the problem with these is this, these are quite narrow, and when the shoe is narrow, they, it also like radically starts falling apart. You can see this is these salmon shoes, these are really narrow, and and this is like this is a complete disaster to run in so that probably means that i'll take these shoes with me so one of the things that i get asked very frequently is how many extra pairs of shoes do i take with me the answer is i don't i don't take anything extra i just take stuff that i really need so that means i take one pair of shoes one pair of socks i take one shirt you know pants shell that's it i carefully consider every single piece of equipment before i take it with me everything goes on scale and then everything goes into this excel sheet and the lightest is not always the best as you saw everything has to have a purpose otherwise i don't take it with me i wouldn't get very far if i would take the extra of everything i mean where do you draw the line? Where do you say, okay, this is enough, I'm not taking this anymore, or I'm still taking this? So I just draw the line at taking one of each. And then, well, I just feel sorry for the person sitting next to me on the plane when I'm going back. Tough luck.